And we're live, Madam Chair. Go ahead, please. Okay. Uh, just in advance, I want to send regrets to uh, Terry McLeod. He has um, been tied up at work today, so he won't be able to attend. Okay. So we can uh, call this meeting to order. And do we have any declarations of conflict of interest? And if you see my face looking over like this, I'm on a second screen with my agenda. And no declarations? Okay, an approval of the um, agenda. Moved by His Worship and seconded by Councillor Duffy in the meeting room. Okay, approval of the previous draft minutes from February the 25th. The attached is here. Any questions on those? All right, so an approval is worship and Councillor Duffy. Great. All right, any business arising from those minutes? Okay, seeing none, we can move on to item number six, discussion item, and that is the Council Advisory Committee membership. The attachment is here um, for us to discuss. Peter, can I have you start with this? Sure. So there's two there's two parts, um, Madam Chair, uh, is that uh, there is a request going forward uh, from now on that if for any appointments for any council committees that councillors be consulted uh, prior to those appointments. Uh, and if you recall, uh, back in uh, 19, uh, we did, uh, sorry, 18, we, uh, we did go through that um, uh, process. And so... Uh, if you want to entrench that into the bylaw, uh, then we'll take that direction from the committee. And again, it is to consult prior to any appointments. And that would mean what in grade eight language? So it says that it was moved by Councilor Treel and seconded by Councilor Duran to forward a motion to council to amend the procedure bylaw to review the standing committee appointment process to ensure that there is a consultation among council. So uh, they would ask, at, I presume, that the council members, what committees would they be interested in, uh, and uh, they would prioritize those, and then the CAC would then try to appoint them based upon the consultation that they had with the various councillors. Okay, so what are we doing with that today? So again, so if you wish us to look at amending the bylaw to reflect that, that that becomes entrenched into our process, and then uh, just uh, give us that direction, and we'll come back with the appropriate amendments to the bylaw. Madam Chair, can you hear? Yes, yes, Councillor Duffy. Uh, um, on regard to that point, uh, it, it all stems from the MGA, where the MGA talks about uh, the duties of council, and the duties of council, and one thing is to uh, uh, appoint uh, people to the various standing committees. But it, it gives the uh, activities that you are supposed to participate in during the appointments in order to make them, uh, you know, as, as good as possible. And, and conversing, uh, uh, collaborating, uh, consulting, or getting the approval of, of each counselor is not listed there. And therefore, you know, uh, going from the act down to the procedural bylaw, if it's not listed in the act, I don't think those actions uh, are deemed to be legitimate because if the uh, people in the legislature wanted that, they would have stated that in the act, and therefore the city could uh, drop down to the bylaw and use those. It would be uh, congruent with the act, to be congruent with the act or in harmony with the act. I don't think we can construct instructions in the procedure bylaw about collaborating, soliciting, or, uh, uh, consult, consulting, uh, approving. I mean, <laughs> it, it, I kind of grin every time I think of the fact that so someone in the last round uh, was upset because he did not get a chance to approve, to provide approval to the uh, CAC about the uh, appointments we made. Uh, but, but, but just an appointed order. Yes, he did. We all, all council did. We voted on the the, uh, the new list of uh, 
the list. Of yeah. Yeah. It, but what he's talking about is prior to the listing being voted on, that each councillor has a yes. has a, uh, a time to, to consult with or collaborate with the CAC, which is ridiculous because we have 10 councillors that are being appointed. We have uh, uh, 10 different committees. Uh, we have four councillors to each committee. That's four individual carrying it to the civil extreme. That's four uh, in the conference calls with the CAC. I don't think it's necessary, and I think it's dangerous because that same individual, in other uh, verbatims that I've done, has repeated time and again. He did not have a chance to tell uh, the members of the CAC what committees he wanted on and what committees he did not want on. So it was all a want rather than the necessity of we need this person in this position for this time. So I don't agree that consultation, uh, solicitation, or some consultation and collaboration and uh, approval from the, the appointed member is required or uh, necessary. So just to be Thank clear, you. just to be clear, Madam Chair. Chair. Just, just to um, be clear on that, does the MGA supersede the procedural bylaw? And maybe if uh, Deputy COA Tina is online, she could clarify that. Because uh, I know there's things I've read in the MGA. There's also things in the procedural bylaw that talk about this council advisory committee. Uh, so either uh, somebody could shed some light on yeah, that. That so, would be great. And so just before I go to the a deputy, um, and just to clarify a couple points of uh, uh, Councillor um, Duffy, in the motion, uh, Madam Chair, there is no request to approve any appointments. It's only that they would be consulted. And so uh, it is not that they have final uh, say or or have any final outcomes, but it is there that they wish to be have council members consulted uh, prior to any appointments. And uh, again, uh, if, if maybe one will recall, we did that during the first phase or the first uh, time we did this. With respect to the, awesome. with the authority, uh, I will go to the DCO, but uh, it, the MGA does give the authority to, to, uh, to enact the procedure bylaw. Uh, and, uh, and in terms of the processes that we have are unique to us, so they don't have to be the same as everybody else, but it does give us the power to create such a, such a bylaw. And I'll go to the DCO. <laughs> Madam Chair, on that chain, thank you, Mr. Kelly, on that chain, on, the, on that uh, strict uh, train of thought, uh, the MGA tells us the only thing we can do is to establish or uh, verify the eligibility of the uh, counselor to sit on the terms of, uh, to sit on uh, um, standing committees. Uh, eligibility, I would assume, and I shouldn't assume, but I would assume one of the major ones would be to be uh, a member of Charlotte City Council to begin with, and and maybe as far as uh, being ineligible because of other things in their background, i.e., uh, that conflict with uh, some of the things at City Hall. They may be very innocent standing alone, but together they may be a little difficult. So if you read that line, that line talks about. Uh, a, eligibility it talks about terms of reference uh, it talks about uh, another one or two things but it does not talk about such things as consultation right so it's yeah. not explicit but it does not prevent it counselor yeah. but it's not needed either mr kelly it really is and that would come out uh, and things that i can provide okay. and that would come out the discretion Reason. of yes. council in terms of how they wish this bylaw to be or yes of how they wish the bylaw to be struck so, Madam Chair, could I just ask the CAO, uh, Mr. Kelly, uh, I have the MGA. Where is that uh, section or that page? I'll go page again. The DCO was, was was going to make comments as per the chair's request, uh, Mr. Mayor. Chair. Okay, go ahead. Thank you. Tina, do you want to go ahead? Uh, sure, I'm going to move this. I, I didn't realize that my horror calendar was still in the background. Um, through the chair to the, the rest of the committee, uh, the, there's a couple of things here. So first and foremost, the MGA does not specify the types of committees that you're going to create. It just gives council the, the power to do so. But ultimately, those committees don't have any power beyond providing some recommendations or 
guidance to council who ultimately have to vote and make decisions that are within their purview. So you don't have the ability to do that at this level. In terms of the procedural bylaw, that's where the specifications about the council advisory committee came in. And um, how you go about that process or whether or not you want to include certain criteria for how that's addressed, you, you can do that. And uh, that would have to, again, be endorsed by council. Um, this, this entire thing actually raises some issues in terms of whether or not um, there should be a committee that basically oversees the appointment of all other committees. And that's, a, that's an item for further discussion at, at, a, at a later date. Madam Chair. You're muted. Yes, Your Worship. Madam Chair, again, I go back to the procedural bylaws, Committees of Council, Section 41.9. As you know, uh, and I know that this procedural rules and procedural bylaw was brought in before we took over uh, or assumed our duties. And I know that of the previous council, uh, eight members uh, who sat on that, or seven members, eight, eight members who sat on that council or on this council. So uh, they were well aware that section 41.9, council shall by resolution establish a council advisory committee which will recommend the terms of references and council appointments to any and all ad hoc or standing committees. These two resolutions that came from the strategic priorities and intergovernment cooperation uh, standing committee, it contravened that section. So I think it's a mute point. Um, and as Councillor Duffy said, and Councillor Ramsey uh, stated at yesterday's meeting, uh, we're just around the corner from a municipal election. And I think, I, I believe we should stay the course uh, and where we're at, uh, because uh, I think there'll be more focus on our election efforts in the coming months than who sits on what committee or who doesn't sit on what committee. Thank you, Madam Chair. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? Um, Councilor Yankoff, I, I, I would, I would support um, the consultation with the various members of of council. It, if it would be very very self-serving if we didn't reach out to look at uh, what individuals counselors at least their their interests were not that we could accommodate them all but it almost looks like we have set up a, a super committee here that's going to dictate to council where they go and and when they when they go I just I don't think that was really the intention of this so I I would caution us moving forward that I I really think we should be reaching out and trying to collaborate with the other members of council and bringing that feedback back here and then make the best decisions possible. Eric, you should contemplate changing the act first because it's not permit. It doesn't give you the authority. It's nice to do, but it doesn't give you the authority uh, to do it. It's very specific of the actions you take when you're formulating the committees and, and consultation is not one of them. So you're going to have to get the act changed to permit it. So, uh, that's that's actually kind of an incorrect interpretation. Unless the act specifies that you can't do that, then there's no reason why you can't incorporate that into your processes. Point of order, Madam Chair. Uh, as you know, Madam Chair, uh, our bylaws can't be weaker than the act. They can be stronger or equipped they can be equivalent or stronger than the act. So I think by consulting, adding that in into the bylaw to consult with every member about where he or she would like to sit on what committee and, and how they would like to participate, that would make our bylaw stronger than the act. Because Mr. Councillor, Councillor Duffy did point out duties of council under um, section 86 of the Municipal Government Act subsection e3 uh the establishment the establishment of committees of council their terms of references term their terms of reference and the appointment of persons 
to those committees. So if, if we add in our procedural bylaw to consult with each and every member, that would make it stronger than the act. But Madam Chair, that said, I think it's inherent uh, on, on, on the committee, this time it didn't happen going forward, that that consultation collaboration cooperation would be part of the process of selecting members to the standing committee, whether as that person would be the chair or a member at large. And uh, as I said yesterday, Madam Chair, the um, the other three big municipalities in Prince Edward Island, Summerside, Stratford, and Cornwall, they left that responsibility to the office of the mayor of selecting the the chairs and also the members at large uh, for the standing committees and advisory committees, and then it goes to council for a vote. So um, we took this course, and you've heard me say this many times, that with shared responsibilities, there are shared decisions and there are shared consequences. Well, this is the consequences, uh, the consequence of, of, of what we did in the last round. Uh, the consultation process uh, was crushed in, uh, the collaboration uh, process or part of this process was questioned and here we are trying to figure out going forward for the next six months what we should do i would say that it would be inherent on any committee especially this committee to make that selection in collaboration in 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 uh, cooperation in consultation with any uh, members of council on where he or she would like to sit as whether as chair or member at large so, Thank you, Madam Chair. so, Madam Chair, just to be clear, again, uh, the MJ uh, is an enabling document for municipalities. It enables uh, the municipalities to create a, a procedural bylaw. You are all correct. I, it's not explicit, but it does allow for the creation. And in that creation, Council can create the rules and the regulations around how they wish to undergo those appointments. So it does not preclude uh, by putting in... Uh, uh, consultation or any other elements that council collectively deems appropriate. So I just want to be clear that it, it is not explicit, uh, but it is there under the processes that it, that it, that it enables council to do so, to put a, uh, that piece in there if they wish to do so. All I have to add, uh, Madam Chair, is that uh, I've been in council 16 years. In those 16 years, I've worked with a lot of people, both elected and staff. I've only known two people that I've ever questioned rather than even fought with uh, staff or the president or the uh, existing administration at the time. And that person is the same person that we've had a uh, recent event. Uh, so um, there is another person who I will not name because it's a, a one-off situation for that individual. So. But uh, in 16 years, one person is always the person, and it always was the same beef. I don't see a need of changing anything. Got it true. We're far and away, everybody is satisfied with what they get. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Okay, so are we moving on? Are we, is there, Peter, is there something we're supposed to do here? Is this a recommendation so, to? No, so uh, this comes from the uh, other committee. Uh, of which, but, uh, by the way, controls, not controls, uh, recommends changes to the bylaw, but right now it is here for this committee's consultation to believe, to see if they believe that this is a, an avenue that they would recommend to council to include in the procedure bylaw. Again, it is here for this committee's uh, um, input and to refer the matter to council uh, that there is support or non-support. If it's not, if there is no support, obviously, uh, there's not much to go forward with, but if there's an agreement uh, through motion to amend the procedure, procedure bylaw to allow uh, a uh, interaction prior to appointments, uh, then uh, that could be done, and we could bring it back here to the committee so they see what's being proposed. Do you think we should add that in for input? I mean, it, it's, it seems like m most people want that. I mean, what's everybody's thought? I know we danced around it a little bit and chatted about it, but do we want that in there? Um, well, you know, and, and then that way this committee does the best they can. It might not always work that way, but it includes at least 
what people's interests are and, and where their expertise perhaps may lie. Just wondering what everyone's thoughts are. So, Madam uh, Chair, and usually, um, in at least the uh, and, and the municipalities I've been involved with over the years, they, there is a degree of consultation. Again, there's no uh, guarantee you're going to get what you what you're asking for, and there's no guarantee that you won't get on what you're not asking for. But the point is, uh, the element of conversation or consultation, for the most part, is inherent in any of those pr uh, processes. It doesn't preclude giving discretion fully to council at the end to a point as they deem appropriate. But again, there is at least a bit of dialogue to go in that direction. Just a question on that, and I'll get to you there in one second, Your Worship. Peter, if that was if that was the best practice, how come we're only hearing about that now? Again, at the time, uh, the committee designed uh, the bylaw the way it is. Uh, but as you, if you recall, Madam Chair, the first thing we did last time is we did uh, consult with all members of council. We did up the spreadsheets, and we then worked with those spreadsheets and made the following appointments. So whether or not it's entrenched in our document, we did follow that at the onset of this very uh, this very process. Okay, Your Worship, go ahead. Madam Chair, uh, I, I sat in council in 2001 to 2003, 2004 to 2006. Uh, when I was first elected, I met with the mayor at the time, George McDonald, and he discussed some of the options that I would like to uh, get involved in at the committee level. Um, he didn't adhere to everything I suggested. And then round two with the new mayor in 2004, uh, I recall uh, Mayor Lee meeting me in the Parkdale room and said, uh, Philip, guess what? Could you take over planning and development? And I said, well, wait now. Thanks. Thanks a lot. I'll see you, see you in council. So, you know, it's not a perfect system, whatever way, whatever approach we take or whatever direction we go down or follow. Let's, uh, again, I think when I look at the procedural bylaw, it does give the council advisory committee the, 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 the authority. And it's, again, the authority to recommend to council, okay? If council did, disagrees with the process of how the, the members were selected, they would defeat the motion, and then the, 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 the motion or the, the request would have to go back to CAC to look review the process. So in the end, council votes on it. And I know that when we recommended the last uh, members to the, the committees that were reshuffled, some members of council voted against the uh, against the recommendations. So in the end, the authority goes back to council. And if council members feel or believe that there wasn't enough collaboration, consultation, and any uh, spirit of cooperation, then then those councillors could sway the, the rest of council to say, send it back and do what you should have been doing right from the beginning. Thank you, Madam Chair. Madam Chair, I, I concur with what the mayor has said. I, I also was uh, appointed to committees over the last 16 years, with the, with the exception of the last four years, since 2017, December 22, 2017, was when the uh, floor of the Senate was provided to the NGA. And the mayor just called you in and he says, uh, here's your roster of uh, standing committees for the upcoming uh, little bit, and you will be chair of this. And, now, do you have any questions or any concerns or anything? As, as the mayor indicated, he had said, I'll see you in the council chambers, and that's how it worked. Uh, nobody nobody fought with the mayor or the approval authority, but some people on this council seem to think they have uh, super superpowers or whatever. Uh, so, and, and it's a very good point he makes. The decision is not made by this no. committee we call CAC. It's made by city council. And in the last time, it was a 7-3 vote to accept. Uh, three people uh, voted and were opposed. Uh, one is the person that I referred to earlier. The other was the other person I referred to earlier. And then there was another individual who was a friend of one of the four going to, uh, who threw his, which I think is uh, kind of uh, not the thing to do. You should weigh your options a little more, a little more orderly manner than that. Anyway. That's, that's all I have to say. Thank you, Madam Chair. Okay, so is there anything else on this? Do we is there, do we need to bring direction to council? Is this just a, a point for just 
so madam chair if discussion peter uh, so, tina uh, so, so madam chair if the committee wishes us to bring back a clause in here to uh, put a consultation process we will bring that back for your view prior to going to council uh, and we're just looking to see if that is the majority consent and if that's so we can bring that back at the next meeting so what do committee members that are here all, um, would they like to see that although i do want to remind the committee that if there is an amendment uh, in going in that direction then it will go back to the strategic uh, planning because again the bylaw does fall under under their peer view with the current um, 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 pro processes in place for, for the terms of reference. Mr. Kelly, Mr. Chair, uh, Mr. Kelly, would that just be more a custod custodial duty of the uh, strategic planning group to have the, uh, the uh, procedure bylaw under their, their umbrella, so to speak? Uh, it seems like a very a peculiar place for the procedure <clears throat> bylaw to be, I would see it more under the administration aspect of HR. So, Maybe, right, but I guess in strategic planning or uh, intergovernmental cooperation, is this being a uh, anyway? So, I, uh, I, I, he, I, I hear what you're trying to say, but right now, under the terms, it falls within their purview. And again, if they wish to be or propose an amendment, they can certainly do so to council. And so, as uh, their motion to amend committees came to you. Any motion that you prepare, propose to change the bylaw would go back to them because, again, that is your normal processes based upon our current terms of reference. And that is why, as you've heard before from both the DCO and, and myself, that uh, at some point in time we do need to overhaul our committees and, and, and the terms of reference to be more reflective of what council wishes us to do for going forward. So, Peter, so if I was to hear this correctly, um were whether to recommend changes to the membership now or whether to amend the bylaw are those kind of no, so the two things that to, to, uh, slightly different under the procedure bylaw right now any appointments to committees are done through the cac this committee here today has that authority to deal with that uh, but with, rega with regards to amending the procedure bylaw, you, uh, they've sent you uh, an item uh, for consultation in regards to, uh, to have consultation with council prior to any appointments going forward. But ultimately, that if that is the desire uh, of this committee as well, it will go back to them and then on to council as they are the ones that hold uh, the responsibility for the bylaw. But the appointments come from here, Madam Chair. Okay. Madam Chair, uh, would it be more appropriate that uh, if the uh, the stepping stones to uh, formulating a uh, uh, meetings of uh, standing committees of council, would it not be that the recommendation would go into city council and then the the any consultation, if so desired, or collaboration or whatever? would be with the council. They're going to be the decision maker, be the with council prior to them making their decision. Wouldn't it be a little slicker than uh, uh, an unnamed counselor uh, approaching the CAC to, to discuss their appointment uh, when they're not the decision maker? The decision maker's in the next room. So just to be clear, you are correct that the ultimate decision maker is council collectively. Uh, but with regards yes. to recommendations, it comes uh, from our committee structure as it is uh, currently yeah. operating. But in that process, it also delegates oversight of different bylaws. And although you folks have the responsibility to appoint to com or recommend appointments for committees, uh, the uh, procedure bylaw falls in the purview of the strategic committee. And again, uh, whether uh, it is a detour or not, because their items try to go directly to council. And if you recall, because they did not adhere to the terms, they were forward to here for review and consideration uh, prior going on to council. So uh, there are steps that we have to ensure. And so if there's any amendment to the procedure bylaw coming forward, it would go back to them for their concurrence and moving forward to council. Councillor Yankoff? 
Yes, Your Worship. Uh, so, okay, I, I, I'm looking at the minutes from the Strategic Priorities Intergo and Intergovernmental Cooperation Meeting of February 24th, and there are two items here, procedural bylaw, A, and then B, appointment of members to the Council Advisory Committee. Okay, that rests with us. That's, that's our response. So, here's, here's what's in the background. There is, an imp there is an impression and a sense that the system currently in place has deficiencies in the process and unfair to some members of council. Well, Madam Chair, what I said yesterday at our strategic priorities and in intergovernment cooperation meeting was that the first round that were decided, I believe, on December 31st, 2018, I remember councillors get up and said, I want to thank the committee for listening to my concerns, listening to what I wanted to, where I wanted to sit and where I wanted to chair. And now, two years later, the impression and sense that the system currently in, in place has deficiencies was that everybody didn't get what they want, but that's going to happen. It happened under the old system that was in place since 1855 up till 2018. So I would suggest, uh, Madam Chair, that the strategic priorities and intergovernmental cooperation come up with the amendment that they want to add to the bylaw. Let them come up with it and bring it to council. That's what I would suggest. The other issue under the appointment of members to council advisory committee, I think we made the decision. This committee was appointed by council under section 41.9 of the rules of procedural bylaw, and we made a decision, or I, I, I get a sense that we we're going forward to leave the committees in place as is because uh, within six months uh, there will be an election. Thank you, Madam Chair. And Madam Chair, could I just add to what the mayor has said is that um, it also has to be known and, and what that paragraph that he just read would leave one with the impression that uh, that other committee that we're, we're uh, reviewing there uh, were, were considered them hard, themselves hard done by this, the, the CAC that operated and came up with that list of recommended standing committee members uh, in September of 2020. If the truth was known, uh, they're, they're saying that they were heard done. If the truth was known, the four elected people, excluding the mayor, because he's there by uh, the, act. the act and he, he, he's busy enough without standing committee, the four elected people were there, took the four most difficult portfolios uh, in, in any municipal government, and that's finance, planning, uh, 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 planning, uh, finance, uh, public works, and human resources slash uh, the CAC itself. So <laughs> it wasn't as though we cherry picked and did the gave us all the nice little duties and gave the bad ones to the people that are complaining, i.e. these people here. So that has to be known that the four most onerous committees to chair were taken by the members of the CAC themselves. Thank you. Thank you, Madam. Thank you. Um, so, Madam Chair, from what I heard uh, from the committee members is that uh, with regards to the request to allow for consultation, is to refer that matter back to the committee and get them to propose amendment if they wish to proceed on to council. Correct there, Mr. Kelly. So That's basically correct. then, are we reviewing and overhauling? Like, no, like uh, again, if you want to refer back to them, Madam Chair, we'll take that direction and put it on their agenda going forward. So for now, all we can really do is like you, address. Yeah, you can deal with item number two with regards to the appointments. Again, that does lie in the purview here prior to going to council. So whatever the committee wishes to discuss or wishes to recommend, uh, then that would go uh, onward to council, whether it's to sustain or support, uh, uh, sorry, whether it's to support or non-support of the of the proposed uh, recommendations. The recommendations to add into this that addresses some of these deficiencies? No, sorry, Madam Chair. Uh, with regards to the consultation process, if that's referred back to the committee, we'll make sure that they take uh, that responsibility on. But with regards to the other recommendation that was brought forward from the committee is in regards to the appointments of the CAC. That rests with this committee in your own purview to recommend to council to either concur or, or, or do not uh, concur with those recommendations, Madam Chair. All right. And so really, I mean, it, 
if we're looking bigger picture, which isn't today, we need to review and overhaul all the committee's terms of references and the procedure of bylaw because right now all we can really do is address what's in front of us, right? So um, if you recall, Madam Chair, that there has been on over the years discussion on whether or not we need uh, 10, 11 committees or whether we should scale them back to three or four or whatever. Uh, that is yet an activity uh, that uh, a council would have to concur with in order for us to go down that road. But right now, uh, it is dealing with what's before us and uh, the procedure bylaw would fall out of uh, whatever other direction council may wish uh, to undertake. But right now, uh, what we can do is again, recommend or not recommend the appointments that are, are before you. Uh, and uh, the other matter would go back to that committee, Madam Chair. But you are correct. At some point in time, we do need to overhaul uh, the processes, which would then, uh, or the uh, committees, which, which then would tie in the, their, their respective terms of reference. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Chair? So, yes, Your Worship. Madam Chair, thank you very much, Madam Chair. Madam Chair, uh, again, the procedural issue will go back to the strategic priorities and intergovernmental cooperation uh, standing committee because that's in their terms of reference. I don't know why it bounced here, but it's here. Let's, it, it should be bounced back. But as for the appointment of members to council advisory committee, uh, Madam Chair, uh, as I said, um, this vote was taking place uh, on uh, when we first arrived as a new council. Uh, remember, it was three members, then it went to four members. We found out, uh oh, we can't have four because we can't have a tie. So then when we, we went to five members. So we made the amendments to accommodate the procedural part of, of, of the committee's work. But Madam Chair, you recall, I recall, all of us recall how many days and how many hours and days and weeks did we spend on forming formulating the terms of references. These these re terms of references weren't just taken from the last council. We had, they were reviewed and, and looked at carefully. And I know some some members of the of our management team has some questions about those terms of references. So if that's the case, we can start reviewing them as part of the strategic plan and, and the comprehensive review of the official plan and zone and development bylaw. Again, a lot of work went into developing those terms of references, not just by the council advisory committee, but members of our staff, management staff, that were part of developing those terms of references. Now they have to be changed again or amended, I should say, to accommodate a going forward. But again, I repeat, we have six months left. Uh, let's stay the course. So I'm recommended stay the course, and as we look at... Uh, at changes forthcoming they will be discussed at this committee and form uh, uh, forwarded on to a future uh, council advisory committee but right now let's stay the course thank you i would second that madam chair or madam chair okay um peter is that necessary does that need a resolution um madam chair uh, again if the committee was going to recommend change obviously that would we uh, require if they maintain the status quo, I believe uh, there is not one required. And I'll go to Tina just uh, to clarify that point. Tina, are you there? Yeah. So uh, in my view, because you're acting in an advisory capacity, if something has been discussed at this level, whether or not you're pro or against, I think that your recommendation needs to go up through council and then they can decide whether or not they agree with you and what they're going to do. So. I think whatever your your decision is here, that it needs to follow the flow and make its way up to council. So then that motion on the floor, Madam Chair, would be in order. Moved. Second it. All those Question. in favor? Question called. Aye. I'm not in favor. So the motion has carried that the committee wishes to just leave things as it is and stay the course for the next six months with Councillor Cody, Deputy Mayor, not in favor. Is that correct? Correction, Madam Chair, status, um, status quo. Okay, so we'll move that on to Council and Council then can make that decision um, from there. But again, uh, Madam Chair, 
let's make sure that the procedural issue goes back to Councillor Ramsey and the strategic priority priorities in intergovernmental cooperation standing committee. Yes, right. Your Worship, we will do that. That's happening, Peter. Uh, and yes, Madam Chair. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay. Okay. If there's nothing else on that, I can have a motion to move into closed session. Here. Moved by His Worship, seconded by Councillor Duffy. Okay. All those okay. in favor? All right. And now, Peter, just let us know when we're good to go. Yeah, just stand by, please. Okay. 